Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Rhys Davis. Uh, I'm a product manager at Canonical, a uh, relatively new product manager for Canonical, uh, looking after the robotics space and the desktop space as well. Uh, for those who don't know, Canonical uh, is the company behind the publishers Ubuntu, uh, which I imagine uh, most people here know about already, but I'll, I'll go over a little bit more in, in this presentation as we go along. Uh, I myself am very new to ROS in general, new to the ROS community. I only went to, my first ROS anything was uh, in Macau a couple of months ago, and now I'm here and it's, it's all very exciting. I'm, I'm liking the community and I want to contribute as much as I can. Uh, the, my whole role is driving Ubuntu towards the future of robotics and making sure we're all heading in the right direction, making sure we're heading in the right direction to follow you guys in the right direction anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm also really excited to talk here. And uh, I hope it won't be too long, uh, but it will cover a bit about Ubuntu and what we can bring to the industrial space in general. Great. All right. So, um, Canonical Ubuntu covers a lot of different places. Obviously, here we're talking about robotics and other things, but as many of you might know, we're also in the cloud and the data centers and in edge devices in general, edge computing, that kind of thing. Um, Thankfully, no one here has said to me yet, um, what are you doing here? Because you're Ubuntu, everyone is using Ubuntu. Lots of people are using Ubuntu for all of these different things, which is great. Um, but we do more than just the operating system. We're trying to support you in lots of different ways. Um, unfortunately, Canonical isn't a robotics company. We don't build robots uh, as a company. I do, and the robotics team does. But uh, Canonical doesn't build any of the robots themselves. We're just here to support the robots and help others build secure, reliable, and stable robots for the future. Uh, on this slide here are the other back battlegrounds, as I call them, like we were talking about. But yeah, we're going to zoom in on Internet of Things and robotics today. Uh, yeah, so uh, the Ubuntu Robotics Vision. Like I say, we don't build robots, but we love robots in general. We want to see more robots out there, and we want to see to it that they are secure, supported, and easily maintained. Uh, these are essentially our key offerings, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Uh, proactive security through live patches and industry standard benchmarks, support for the Ubuntu operating system itself, as well as add-ons, which I'll get onto in a little moment, and maintenance through things what we call snaps, which a lot of you might have heard of, but again, I'm going to cover it just now. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about now today is about snaps on Ubuntu Core. Some of you might have heard of Ubuntu Core, some of you might not have. Some of you are probably quite tired of hearing about Ubuntu Core, so I'm going to focus on uh, snaps themselves. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about the continued support that we're offering for Python 2 on ROS. And then further than that, what I think is the main uh, point of this presentation at all is talking about support for ROS distributions going forward through the LTS for people who aren't quite ready to, to leave it behind yet for ROS 2. So uh, I'll get started with snaps. I'm not going to talk about how to create snaps or what they do, because a lot of you here are probably a lot more technical than I am and a lot more software orientated at least. Uh, so I won't get into too much of the details about this, but on the face of it, what they are is they're a squash FS file system containing your app runtime and a snap YAML file. Um, and it was along with uh, metadata and it has, once you have it installed, it's just accessible through a writable area. It's self-contained, it bundles most of the libraries and runtimes it needs and can be updated and reverted without affecting the rest of the system. It's confined from the OS and other apps through security mechanisms, but can exchange content and functions with other snaps according to a fine-grained policies that we call um, that we call interfaces. So it's fully confined with a very small uh, attack surface, if you will. Um, snaps are growing in momentum. They let you control the environment that you're in and the configuration, the visions and updates of your software. Uh, they're another way to contribute the software to whatever project you're working on in a secure and accessible way, supported on a certified development board with Ubuntu Core or on your development workstation or anything like that. And the great thing about Snaps is you can take them from, uh, from online, from just on your workstation, using things like Atom or Discord or Visual Studio. One of the most popular Snaps that we have out there at the moment is Spotify, so you can, even that's been snapped. And then you can take it all the way down to your developer boards, certified or not. Um, things on Raspberry Pi or maybe something more homegrown where you can put all of your snaps on there and run your robot however you like to do it. Uh, for example, uh, one of our team is working on a snapping the whole of the, the t uh, we call it snapping, it's not the best thing, putting, putting all of the software into one snap for the, uh, for the TurtleBot itself, so you can just upload your snap to TurtleBot and off it goes. Uh, one, of the main, one of the main and the best features about snaps is its transactional updates. We've heard a lot so far about 
uh, about rollbacks, and if something goes wrong, you need to be able to turn it back. Uh, and this, this is what this diagram tries to represent here, is if you have your original snap with your writable error, you, you write your snap in your uh, developer environment, you send it to your, you send it to your robot over the air using, using the snap store, which I'll get on to in a moment. Uh, and once the snap is updated, it just sends the delta, right? It just sends the change, so it's, it's a lightweight, easy to use thing. I've heard a lot of people talking about how they've used snaps in the past and they just they didn't like it for whatever reason, and they found uh, they found better alternatives and so on and so forth. Uh, and I'm really I'm trying to say to those people that you should give it another go because I mean I think it's pretty good. Um, and then if the snap fails, if there's still a bug, or if you need to change anything, it roll back it rolls back to its uh, last stable state. Uh, yeah, and this is this is a use case for robots in any industry. It's just it's just about your secure software going to a robot and making sure the robot stays secure. So it's it's got everything in mind from environmental robots to nuclear and energy and so on and so forth. Um, the main point uh, that Canonical in general tries to get across is security and technology and making sure that you don't fall prey to any malicious software. And one of the best things, the best thing maybe about Snaps is the security that they come with, uh, which is application confinement, because they're minimized and they're predefined writable areas for each application. So the overall attack surface is greatly minimized. At the base of any system that is able to run Snaps is the core Snap, as you can see here. So that's packaged itself as a Snap as well, bringing with it the things that I'm about to talk about, as well as the, uh, the other benefits. The, the slide here is cutting off a little bit, because I must have... Uh, bit of lost in translation, but um, yeah, anyway. Uh, if a snap needs to be more than what it is, than what it's provided by the base in the snap, it can be, uh, it can bring in those dependencies itself, which means you can even install LXD containers or Docker containers inside your snap and use it that way, Getting using your Docker container and still bringing with it all the security that comes with uh, using snaps. Uh, again, another bit of a uh, lost in translation sort of slide. But um, what this, I'm now going to talk about the Snap Store itself, which a lot of you might be familiar with as somewhere you upload software to and you can edit and, con uh, edit and deploy and, and deal with your software there. Uh, it's, it's an online, open source, free to use uh, place where you can upload your Snaps to. It's a place for collaboration where lots of people work on their software together and uh, enterprises, companies, small organizations, organizations and developers all work together on their software. It's a home for community support. Ubuntu has one of the biggest, if not the biggest, community around it in Linux in general. Uh, and it's a place where people can go and they can ask for support and on a non-proprietary uh, sort of level and just talk these things through. And it's a place for you to manage your software. So it's all in one place and it comes with all these neat features that you can use to manage your software and make sure everything works. Um, how they're useful, they add another layer of security because if all of your snaps package, if all of your software is packaged as snaps and they're in the snap store, everything's protected in the same way. Uh, software can be distributed and deployment deployed over the air wherever your snap is connected to the snap store itself. So you can modify and update and do whatever you want to it through the snap store. Uh, and it's and it's a place for collaboration, so people can work together, like I said before. Um, in, in with what comes with the snap store is you have the uh, four channel slider mode almost uh, type of layout where you can have a, a test snap in your in your testing facility and you can you can modify your robot in there and you can work on it with that and then once it's once it improves you can upload it to another channel and send it out to a different kind of robot until you're ready to only send it out to the ones that you've got in the field and uh, maintain that a certain level of uh, security for your customers or for the people that you're working with and your developers and so on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, again, just a bit about why they're great. Where it gets more interesting for commercial robots is the privacy of the, of, uh, of the Snap Store itself. But then for bigger organizations or for enterprises or, or for startups you want to grow, um, or for people more, even more concerned about security, there's the option for a, a potential for privatization of a brand store, a personalized, customizable, Snap Store for themselves, like an App Store, like like the Google Store, or the Apple Store, or whatever like that, where you can um, where you can secure and you can hold all your software in one place, and then you can reflash your devices and make it more personal to them, and you can and you can even sell your software that way as well, and just keep it all in a very contained, personable sort of environment. Okay, um, a little now, a little while ago, now we got an interesting question from a customer. 
Uh, Python 2, as everyone here likely knows, will reach end of life in approximately 20 days from now. Uh, this shouldn't be news to anyone, um, but there we go. Uh, the plans, of course, for to use Python 3 in the in next releases, releases of ROS and, and ROS 2 already uses Python 3. But the question was, what does that mean for existing ROS 1 distributions, kinetic and melodic? And uh, because they're still using Python 2, obviously. The answer really depends on where you're getting your Python from. But if you're using Ubuntu Xenial or Ubuntu Bionic, uh, we want you to know that Python 2 from the Ubuntu repositories will continue to be supported for the lifetime of that Ubuntu release. So if you're concerned about having to change because of Python 2, because you're developing Python 2, if you're, if you're on Bionic or Xenial, uh, yeah, then uh, the, the, the package repositories will continue to continue to be supported. Great. Uh, yeah, and now getting on to a bit more of the what I what I wanted to bring to this conference in general. Uh, this is something that Canonical has or does for a number of other things that we care about with uh, things like OpenStack, for example, in the cloud. And it's ESM, it's Extended Security Maintenance. And what this means is when a ROS distribution reaches end of life, um, what we're planning at the moment, what we've got engineers working on at the moment is supporting and continue to contribute security updates and support for that distribution itself and for its core dependencies, hence why I mentioned Python just now. So we have a team of engineers dedicated at the moment to working on security for the ROS distributions and for the support that they're going to need post, uh, post end of life, right? So for anyone who's not quite ready to move away from ROS1 to ROS2 or for someone who's worried that ROS2 is not quite there yet, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, the support, the support will be there, so you don't need to rush any more than you want to. Um, what this actually means for right now is that we are working for the 10-year for ten support for ROS Kinetic right now, which we'll also be bringing to other ROS distributions in the future, but we're going to start with Kinetic. Uh, but support for ROS doesn't mean much if its core dependencies aren't, all support, also, aren't also supported. Uh, so if we don't say that, people will have questions. But yeah, so the core, the core dependencies that the ROS distributions rely on will also be supported and carried through to the end of life as well. In addition to supporting ROS uh, for ecosystem support, a bunch of, we'll also be supporting a bunch of languages and frameworks that goes with that, like Python and uh, the things that people find the most useful and the things that people who come to us about it ask for, uh, which is part of the reason I'm here. We're looking for starter cases, ROS products, people using ROS uh, who want to figure out, so we can figure out the best packages that we can uh, install security uh, support for and just general support in general. We have support for around, um, we have patches of support for around 80 packages, 80 core packages at the moment already, and we're just looking to expand that and keep, keep this rolling until it, uh, until it reaches end of life. Um, yep, yeah, okay. And then, but why would you want to do that? Maybe you hate change, like this cat. Maybe you're not quite ready to move to ROS2 yet. Or maybe you have robots out there that still need to transition, and it's just too painful. Um, the beauty of Ubuntu in general is that uh, from desktop all the way through to production, you can use Ubuntu, you can keep the familiarity, and you can use the things that I've just talked about here to make sure everything stays the way you want it, and you, can only, and you only have to move, and you only have to go to the next thing when you, when you want to. Uh, yeah, so I think that's, that's me. Thank you. There are any questions? And we have time for one or two questions. Yes, here. Yeah, go ahead. Oops. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the speech. Uh, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and thanks for the uh, ESM. That's super exciting for most of us. Uh, could you? I think so. Could you share with us when is that starting and if it's going to apply to ROS one and ROS two? Um, so it's well, it's going to only apply to ROS one for the moment. Maybe in many years' time, we can think about the same thing for ROS two. Uh, it's something that we're thinking about now, and it's going to re officially release once we've come up with. Um, the appropriate ways to, to talk about it and to do it next year. But it's something we wanted to tell, talk about here so that people know about it, so that no one's rushing to necessarily move to ROS2 if they don't have to. So next year. OK, maybe one more questions we have time for? No one? OK, then thanks again. All right.